All right, in this series of videos, we're gonna be talking about working with PyQt in the context of Unreal. And if you are unfamiliar with Python and Unreal in general, I have an introductory course here available that you can check out. I will include a link in the uh, description below, but it's called Utilizing Python for Editor Scripting in Unreal Engine, and it's available here at the Epic Dev community. I'm also gonna be using this UI template, which is available on my personal page, again, here in the Epic Dev community. So if you want to grab it, you can just click over here and then I think expand code and there's going to be like a little thing to copy the full snippet and then you will have something that looks very much like this code right here. So one of the great conveniences of using PyQt is it's going to be identical in terms of setting up the UI. We don't have to do anything different depending on where we're going to ultimately end up. Uh, I've got a very simple UI here. I'm not going to uh, walk through the process of creating it because at this point, hopefully that's uh, pretty clear. But I've added a button here called print actors. And in the code, I am identifying it, creating reference. And then I have a simple function here. This is a method that is just gonna go through and get all the actors in the level and then just print their label. So I'll show you what that looks like very quickly. I've already imported this. So we would do import PyQt Unreal Demo as demo. And then we gotta grab reload and then we can reload it and it will just print the actors. And if I hit close, it'll go ahead and close it because it's gonna run this close window method, which is available here in the template. So there's a couple things we gotta talk about that are gonna be necessary to make this work. The first thing is wherever you're saving this Python file, you've gotta tell Unreal, specifically your project, where to find it. So to do that, you go to project settings, and then you scroll down to Python, this is assuming, I believe you no longer have to enable the plugins, but for, if for some reason you're doing this on an older version of Unreal, you gotta go to plugins and then I think probably scripting is the right thing here. Make sure you've got editor scripting utilities and Python editor script plugin and sequencer. Well, th this is probably not necessary, but if you wanna do any sequencer scripting, turn that on as well. But anyway, gotta make sure those are enabled. They're probably enabled by default. And then I have two additional paths here that I'm adding. So the first one is going to be to a project file inside of this project called Python, which is probably where this lives. I wonder if it'll tell me where the path is. And then the other one is also extremely important. It's where my default Python modules get saved when I, when I do a pip install. So I'll talk about that in a second. So this is where you got to add those paths. And then Unreal is just going to know where that stuff is. So you, you can uh, reliably save a Python file here in this folder and then Unreal will be able to import it without any trouble. All right, yeah, here's the path, right? So blah, 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 Python, blah, 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 Python. Okay, so yeah, that's gonna be super important. The other thing we gotta do here is we gotta make sure that we have PySci2 installed. PySci2 is something that you're probably gonna have to install manually. I don't think it comes by default in the default Python install. When you, when you first install Python, there's a little option, a little checkbox that says like, do you want to install this in the default location? If you check yes, this is where that will be. So you basically want to go through, find whatever your Python version is, and then just add this to the, the additional paths there. And that way, when you do a pip install on PySide 2, then it'll go ahead and put it in the right spot. So Unreal can find it and it will be able to construct all of the Qt UI stuff that's so incredibly useful. In case there are any questions about how to install PySide 2, it's very simple. Just do a very quick Google search for it. Click on the first link here. And with most Python modules on the official documentation, there's gonna be something like this at the top, which is gonna be the pip install command for the module. You can just copy it. And then if you open a command prompt, all you gotta do is paste it in. I'm probably going to get a message that it's already installed here, but that's all you got to do. And at that point, it'll be available in the site packages folder, at whatever your default install path is for Python. You may be wondering why we didn't have to do any of this PySide 2 stuff when we were working with Maya, and that is because Maya is completely constructed from PySide 2 widgets, and it has its own install. All right, in the next video, we're going to be talking about using the file dialog object available as a Qt widget. Super useful and uh, pretty simple to use. So stick around for that.